Welcome, welcome, welcome to Story Time with me, Miss Sheila. I hope you're having a wonderful and beautiful day. Today's story is called The Night Before the Nutcracker. Isn't that a cool title? So let's find out all about it. Okay, okay. It was the night before the nutcracker and sleepless in their beds. These budding ballet dancers are rehearsing in their heads. After months and months of making sure that every move is right, it's the moment they've been working for. Tomorrow's opening night. <gasps> so they're going to have their performance. They dazzled their directors with astonishing auditions full of energetic periods and elegant positions. From hopefuls by the hundreds, it's the fortunate and few who are classed as a classic character from 1892. That's how old the Nutcracker is. Precision in performances comes with passion and with prep. So they practice every pan and pan and pan and study every step. As soon as students shine in every picture perfect pose, they are ready for rehearsals and for run throughs with the pros. How exciting that would be. Each costume made to measure is exquisitely constructed and the orchestra below is tuning up to be conducted. On stage for dress rehearsal, sets and lights are bold and bright and applause awaits tomorrow when at last it's opening night. Lots goes into productions. They shuffle through the stage door and they warm up at the bar. Then it's costume, hair, and makeup for each fearless future star. There's time to spare for schoolwork and for lucky last embraces to the burst of joy and jitters when a stage hand hollers places, places everybody. Tavonsky's music sets a mood of jolly jubilation as Clara and her brother host a Christmas celebration. While merrymakers mingle, Carla skips and spins with joy when Drostomer offers her the ballet fabled toy. She sneaks downstairs much later. And she sees, to her surprise, her soldier and his squadron spring to life before her eyes. Triumphantly, the troopers overcome the most king's swarm as the shocked and sleepy Carl Clara sees her nutcracker transform. A swift and steady snowfall stalls the couple's getaway. When Dalshausmer says saves them with a send off in his sleigh, in the wings at intermission, Mother Ginger's kids are stowed, while behind the scenes the crew is sweeping snowflakes by the load. The second and the second act transports us to the lavish lands of sweets for a friendly fairies fest of, of wondrous, wonderful, worldly treats. From far and near, for revelers inspiring and press, and a cavalcade of clo clowns pop out a Mother Ginger's dress. Wow! Finally, a pas de, a pas de deux that Clara won't forget She's transformed into a princess for a dashing dream duet. Suddenly she wakes at home, and nothing as it seems. In disbelief she wonders, was it only in my dreams? The ballet ends, and smiling smiles as sweet as sugar plums. The cast will bow, the crowd will cheer, and down the curtains come. And there's all the crew, all the actors and dancers. 
Their families and their friends await with oohs and ahs and flowers as at, at a post-performance party where they'll celebrate for hours. But not too late, for though they've danced through one successful show, they'll be back again tomorrow and have many more to go. With months of work behind them, and now they're dreaming with delight of the magic and the merriment to come tomorrow night. So they're dreaming of their characters. Oh, and here, it's at the back, it just shows the different costumes of that time. If you really enjoyed this book, until next time with me, Michelle, keep telling you late. Bye. Bye for now.